We're just under two weeks since I made my video talking about how much anti-queer content was coming out of Eric July's channel, specifically the stuff coming from him and Az together in their podcast and the clips they were releasing. Quick recap, out of 62 videos, I believe, 42% of those videos in a 30-day period were about anti-queer topics. I have to admit, it's pretty wild to me that these two straight cisgender men get on camera every single week. They have a podcast they make. And the vast majority of the stuff they talk about in their podcast uh, has to do with queer people. I'm not accusing them of anything. It's just really sus to me. It is. And then we have the Saskas here joining them who are just nodding and smiling as as shows off his media illiteracy, his absolute zero understanding of queer culture and filmmaking when it revolves around queer subject matter. The video in question here is titled, Now They Demand Empathy. That's the title of the video. The thumbnail shows Iceman and the Birdcage, and it talks about the lack of nuance. And that's very rich coming from these guys, particularly this kind of content, which bathes in lack of nuance, exists due to lack of nuance. They would not have a platform if it was not for the lack or ignoring nuance completely as content creators. And in this clip, when Az is talking about the birdcage, he is showing just how ridiculously ignorant he is when it comes to media literacy, not only just in filmmaking and culture in general, but in queer history and queer culture. The four people on camera in here do not see the irony in anything that he is saying. So we're gonna watch a very small portion of this clip where he talks about the birdcage, and then I'm going to debunk the fuck out of everything he says. Around somebody, you could, I could let's take a film. Let's take the birdcage. Ah, oh, let's take the birdcage. Oh, great, great fucking film. Yes. Right? And after watching, after watching the birdcage, I came away with it going, look, they just want to live their lives. Yeah. You know, you've you've got you've got this flamboyant gay couple, and you've got this conservative heterosexual parents. <laughs> They just want to live their lives, right? Okay, so the primary characters in the movie, the two men who are together, own a drag bar. The biggest, most popular drag bar in South Beach. And it's you see it in the movie. There's tons of people outside waiting to go inside. It's very obvious. There's drag queens walking around in public. All of that's going on. If that existed today in a film, as would be talking shit about it, just based on that premise alone. He would not care about context or who's in the movie, or any of the other subject matter. That alone would be enough for him to scream about it on camera and get mad. And 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 they come together and, and they, they at the end, they reconcile. They, they sort of, you know, they, they get where people come from because the, the father, you know, the son and the daughter want to get want to get married, but it's getting those parents together. And oh my God, what the fuck are we going to do? And and that, and that something like that, even though, uh, uh, of course, Robin Williams wasn't gay, Nathan was. You Nathan know, you, 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 what? I know. Surprise. <laughs> well, that's so funny, right? Nathan Lane being gay. Fun fact, since we're laughing about it, Nathan Lane was not out in 1996. He was not openly gay in 1996. He was still a closeted man. Meaning that during the time that this film was released, there was no actual gay representation in the creative team because nobody was out. Nathan Lane was not out. Um, Robin Williams, obviously Gene Hackman, Diane Weiss, um, Directors, writers, none of those people were, as far as I know, were, were gay people. Um, so it was a complete heterosexual, cisgender creative team behind the birdcage. We're going to talk about that more in a moment. However, when did Nathan Lane actually come out? Nathan Lane came out after the death of Matthew Shepard. So 1999-ish, around that time is when Nathan Lane started talking openly about being gay, because Matthew Shepard in the 90s, a time where Az seems to be reminiscing about how cool it was back then with gay people and, and how things were just different and much better than they are now. Yeah, Matthew Shepard was killed in a horrific hate crime. He was killed for being gay. One of the most pivotal uh, hate crimes in the history of gay culture in the United States. So, and that happened after the birdcage came out two years after the birdcage is when that happened. So this romanticism about the birdcage and how it was much better back then and that gay people and straight people got along and blah, blah, blah. No, the nineties, this, this, this glazing over what the nineties was for gay people is uh, again, just pure ignorance. You can, you can build up that empathy because you kind of, you're rooting for them. Yeah. You're, you're rooting. For, now you have people who, who are pushing these, this ideology and they're in power in everything. 
pushing an ideology. How is that any, how is it any different now than it was then? What's the difference in the filmmaking in the nineties with these kinds of movies and the filmmaking now? And I'm going to tell you what that is. It's that gay people are actually involved in making their content now. That's the difference. The difference is queer people are behind the cameras, they're writing scripts, they're directing, they're acting in the films, they're being a part of their own narratives, their own stories. The Birdcage, as much as I love that movie, as important as it was to queer history and a turning point for queer media, that movie was made by straight people. It was a gay movie through the lens of straight people, which is why there's still a lot of problems in that film. There's a lot of issues with that film. Um, but that movie opened the door for more queer, gay, lesbian, trans, in general films down the road. So that movie, even though it didn't get 100% right, it was a, a, a step in the right direction. And for as to go, oh, there's ideology now, but it wasn't back then. Well, the difference is you were watching a story about gay people through the lens of heterosexuality. And now stuff is being made through the lens of homosexuality. So it's like we're claiming our, our art. We're able to make our own stories. And so we're talking about that when we're making it. The, the creative process is more obvious. And instead of building empathy, they're now demanding. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And you, nobody, I demand. Citations, examples. Um, Who's demanding anything of you when you can choose not to see it? This isn't a job you're going to every single day. You have to clock in and, and they demand that you give them empathy. I think you're confusing empathy with general respect, which you don't have for most people as. Man, you respect my, the, you wrestling fans, the pair of you. What is yeah. the cheapest way for a heel to get heat? Demands respect. Yeah. Because respect is earned. Yeah, you exactly. can't demand respect and get it. it See, that's the thing. That's the thing. That's where we're going to end the clip so I can dive into all of this. Uh, no, you're supposed to have a general respect for other people, for other human beings. That's just like what we just go around punching, kicking, and screaming at people. Is that that's not a civilized society. And for him to suggest that just means that he's upset that he can't be rude and disrespectful to people without getting some sort of pushback or being held accountable or any of those things. So let's dismantle this idea, this romanticism around the birdcage and the 90s and the difference in media. The first big difference, the first big thing that makes modern films different from movies back then is this place we're in, the internet. The internet makes a massive difference in the way we engage with media. And I'm not talking about not having access to it. I'm talking about the era of social media, video creating, Twitter, Reddit, Tumblr, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. These places did not exist in 1996 when the birdcage came out or when a lot of these early queer uh, pop culture films existed like uh, Wong Fu uh, and, and Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, these kinds of movies that made massive differences in the way gay people were perceived in modern times, in a lot of ways, helped what we have now in terms of progress and openness and things like that. But this didn't exist. So we didn't have people like you, like Eric, and I guess now like the Saska sisters, who are astroturfing and finding one tiny thing, one little bit of this story or this quote from an actor and turning it into this narrative and trashing them and attacking them and knowing everything about them. Because back then in the 90s, unless an actor did an interview, had a thing in, in a paper or with some sort of like advertisement for the film, you did not hear them talking about the stuff like they do now. Because now the creative process from the minute the, the movie is announced to the time it comes out, you guys, just like all of us, we're all interested in it, but, but you guys specifically are hyper fixated on going, okay, it is a movie that is going to have a gay person in it, so I'm going to pay attention to every single bit of media that comes out. So the minute someone says anything queer positive, we're just going to attack it. That did not exist in 1996. Those kinds of conversations happen with your friends, where there was no accountability in the public sphere. Like now you get online and you say that, oh, you know, gay people suck and this movie sucks because it has like a lesbian in it or something. If you do something like that, you you get held accountable. Back then you could say that to your friends. You could laugh about it because like six of you, whatever, standing around and nobody gave a shit. 
But now you ha- everybody has a megaphone. That's what the internet has done. The internet, what, what you are doing right now leads to lack of nuance. What we are doing here can also lead to a lack of nuance, a lack of context. It is almost impossible to provide enough of that to have a completely unbiased conversation about anything on the internet. So that has affected how we culturally consume, engage, and view media like movies and TV shows. Two completely different worlds now. Two completely, like you can't compare them. We talk about like, uh, well, they talk about like, you couldn't make blazing saddles in today's world. You couldn't make the birdcage in today's world because this, this complete an utter disconnect on what the birdcage was at a fundamental level that as is completely overlooking here, talking about things being preached to or, or demanding respect or all of this. Uh, this is a movie, if you haven't seen it, the DNA of the movie is about social acceptance. It is about political divide. It is about two people from two different worlds arguing with each other about what is right and what is wrong. And Gene Hackman's character is not perceived as the good guy in this movie. He's not. That is why you feel empathy for uh, Robin Williams and Nathan Lane's character. That is how they did that, by making the conservative Christian politician the uh, antagonist of the film. But you didn't see it that way because you went to the movie without thinking about that before you sat down in the seat and you actually had an opportunity to see how the story played out. And so that's a massive difference in the way we consume media. Very quickly, let's watch a small clip from this movie that, as claims, wasn't preaching or talking about messages. This is one of many clips in this movie where the dialogue and the conversation is about social and political differences. But this is one that stands out to me because it is is an almost mirror image of what we're dealing with in today's world. Here we go. I have such a good feeling about you people. Uh, Not a lot of clever books on the shelves, not a lot of fancy art on the walls, just the crucifix and a lot of good, warm family feeling. Mm. Now, this is what Clinton didn't understand when he started in on school prayer and gays in the military. Uh Oh, yeah, see, this movie, not preachy at all, not discussing politics or anything like that, like in today's movies, where they talk about politics and social issues. But it didn't happen in this movie, right? That wasn't something that that we talked about in The Birdcage. All right, for you. Now, there's an idiotic issue, gays in the military. I mean, those haircuts, those uniforms, who cares? <laughs> you shouldn't be talking about things you don't know about. Val, don't patronize your mother. She's an amazingly intelligent woman. You know, I think homosexuality. <laughs> Lots more ice for you. Lots more ice, Dad. One of the things that's weakening this country. Mm. Really? You know, that's what I thought until I found out Alexander the Great was a f- Talk about gays in the military. How about those dolphins, huh? So I think As is either misremembering or misrepresenting the birdcage as a film. The idea that this movie did not do anything like what we do today. By design, by DNA, by structure, by foundation, this movie is about social and political divide. It is the narrative of the film. And if this movie were going to be made today, they would be astroturfing the fuck out of this movie. Every single clip from this movie that I could share with you, every single snippet from interviews or whatever could be used in the same way that they use clips today to attack modern films. I also think it's important to note that this movie came out in 1996, six years out from homosexuality being declassified as a disease. Up until 1990, the World Health Organization had classified being gay as a disease. We were only six years out from that when this movie came out, which is wild in itself. We also had the AIDS crisis. HIV was was rampant. I lost so many people that I knew in my life through the 90s dealing with that. Uh, Obviously, we talked about the Matthew Shepard thing. The, The 90s was not some golden era of like relations between gay and straight people. And for As to sit on camera with Eric and with the Saskas, who were supposedly gay allies, I think they're, they're supposed to be pansexual themselves, according to them, um, to sit there and laugh it off as if this movie wasn't speaking to all the struggles and everything we were dealing with on a day-to-day basis as gay people back in the 90s. Um, it's just disingenuous. And again, media literacy Either he does not fundamentally understand what the birdcage was, or he hasn't watched it since 1996. Um, because he talked about just the, the the bare bones of the story, but did not dive into the actual 
social and political commentary that happened in this movie where the son wanted the dads to pretend to be straight, take all the art down in, in their house, replace all their furniture with furniture these conservative Christians was like, all to pretend to be something they weren't so that the politician, the Republican politician would be okay with them. That's the core of the film. That's the design of the movie. So for him to act like this movie was not some sort of statement, some sort of lecture or some sort of conversation about queer existence. I'm telling you right now, it is very weird to me that Eric and Az and now the Saskas who are on there sit around and spend a lot of their time talking about gay topics and not really knowing what they're talking about. Taking movies like this, classic films that are a big part of gay culture from the 90s, pivotal things from the 90s, and trying to use that as a weapon against us, the gay community, because we're the ones causing the problem. We're the issue. When our stories are being told with straight actors through the straight lens, straight directors, straight writers, when those stories are being told that way, they're okay. Then he's going to have empathy for it. Then it's all right. But nowadays, when we're telling our own stories and we're talking about the things that affect our communities, the things that affect our worlds, then we're demanding things. Then we're demanding empathy. We're demanding respect. It's homophobia. It's homophobia. These two guys are homophobic. And, I, and there's something sus about the amount of time they spend talking about this shit. Just saying. 